Welcome to Bible Tract Echoes. This program is the radio ministry of Bible Tracts Incorporated. Our mission is to take the Word of God to all the world. Our Bible teacher is the director of Bible Tracts, Pastor Mark Smith. Since 1938, Bible Tracts Incorporated has been publishing clear gospel tracts and supplying them to churches, missionaries, and individuals all over the world, and all at no charge. Information on how you can receive a free sample pack of our tracts will be given at the end of this broadcast. Now for our Bible study, here is our teacher, Pastor Mark Smith. Hello, my friend. Welcome to the broadcast. Thank you so much for joining us today. Right now, my Bible is setting up under the book of Galatians in chapter 1. Galatians chapter 1, and I want to encourage you, if possible, for you to reach over, pick up your own copy of the Word of God, and join me there. Galatians chapter 1, in a moment, I'm going to begin reading at verse number 10. I have in my hand a gospel track that I want to share with you and encourage you to get. And for that to happen, I need for you to have a piece of paper and a pencil ready, something to jot down some information at the end of the broadcast. I'm just telling you that so that you can be prepared to become a participant in the whole business of sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ. But I'll say more about that here in a moment. Let me begin with this this old, old joke. There is this joke about a seven-year-old boy coming to his dad and asking this question, Dad, where did I come from? Well, well, of course, the dad thinks the boy is asking about the whole process of how human beings are born. Well, after stumbling and stuttering for a few moments with his words, the dad asks the son, well, tell me, Billy, uh, why do you want to know this? Well, Billy's answer is very simple. He says, well, Dad, Tommy says his his family comes from Cleveland, and I just wonder where we came from. <laughs> right about now, every every parent is chuckling because you have been there, and so have I. I start the broadcast this way because we have a question today in front of us, and it's a question about origins. Not about the origins of the created world, but at the origins of the gospel message. Where did the gospel message come from? If our message came from men, then frankly, it holds no higher place than does Buddhism, Shintoism, Islam, or whatever religion you want. But if the gospel we preach has its origins in in the creator God, then we have a responsibility to hold it, tell it, and defend it. So the question today is, where did our gospel come from? We're going to try to answer that today using Galatians chapter 1. Get your Bible and be ready to join us there in a moment. I already mentioned about this gospel track in my hand. Remember the word track is spelled T-R-A-C-T. We're referring to a written pamphlet, although when we refer to gospel tracks, they are short written presentations of the gospel. How to, can a person know Jesus Christ as their Savior from sin? Christ died not to make your life better, not to help you with your problems in life. All those things may or may not come, but Christ died to free you from the condemnation and the guiltiness that was just weighing you down all the way to hell unless you come to Christ to be saved. That's the problem we have. That's why Christ went to the cross. All of our gospel tracts present the gospel clearly. The one in my hand right now is entitled Memorial Stones. Memorial Stones. A number of people will use this around the time frame of Memorial Day or at a time when their family is going through a loss of a loved one and a funeral and so on, and we're going to the cemetery, and there are going to be that in the graveyard, all those stones with names and dates on them. What a great time to share the gospel. Life, human life is a wonderful thing, but it ends eternal life is a great thing. It can be, or it can be an awful fate, but it does not end. Where will you spend eternity? Recently, my wife and I attended the funeral of a, well, we refer to her as a shirt tail relative. There was no blood ties, but uh, we loved her and we owned her as part of our family. She died and a, a pastor held the funeral. I'd never met this pastor before. He happened to be a Nazarene man. He preached the gospel. He made it clear. He, he gave a call for people to receive Christ. I was so thrilled with the presentation of the gospel. 
He used a funeral to tell people they need to be ready for eternity. That's what this track does. Would you let me send it to you, please? At the end of this broadcast, my announcer is going to come on and give you some ways by which you can give us your name and address. And by so doing, we will send you absolutely free of charge a complete sample packet of all of our English gospel tracks. Now, be ready for that. Jot down the way that best suits you to communicate with us, and let's become partners in telling the gospel. Please do that today. Galatians chapter 1, beginning at verse 10, here's what it says. For do I now persuade men or God, or do I seek to please men? For if I yet pleased men, I should not be the servant of Christ. But I certify, you brethren, that the gospel which was preached of me is not after man. For I neither received it of man, neither was I taught it, but by the revelation of Jesus Christ. I stop reading right there. Now, we begin this week with the second section of Galatians chapter 1. Section 1, I I entitled, An Introduction to God's Son. That's verses 1 to 5. Section 2 here deals with the uh, section I've titled, An Introduction to God's Salvation, verses 6 through 12. The The next section will cover verses 13 to 24, the end of the chapter, and that section I've entitled, An Introduction to God's Servant, that person being the Apostle Paul. Now, let's come to the three verses that I've read here for today. So far in verses 6 to 12, we're looking at the, well, we have looked at the true message of salvation. We've looked at the traitorous men against salvation and the troubled minds over salvation. Now we're looking at the tone of ministry in salvation. I base that upon verse 10. Those words again are the tone of ministry in doing the work of salvation. The Apostle Paul had apparently been accused of preaching a different gospel to different people. He was accused of being more of a, of a politician than a gospel preacher. He was out to please men rather than God, some people said. As sad as it is, even the most ardent and godly pastor can get his head turned by either the praise of men or the paycheck from men. And not a single preacher I know of, well, frankly, not a single preacher ever is beyond falling to that, uh, succumbing to that kind of temptation. And that includes yours truly. Here in verse 10, The Apostle Paul asks his readers if um, they think he is trying to persuade or gain their approval. He then asks if they think he is trying to become acceptable to people. And quickly, he, he says that these ideas are blatantly false and that he is the bond servant of Christ. His task is not to curry the favor of men, but to go for the favor of God. No man can serve two masters. You know that and I know that. But next, in verses 11 and 12, Paul defends how he was taught the message. If you're one of those listeners that takes notes, I've just given you my last outline title for verses 6 through 12. We began with the tone of ministry in verse 10, now the taught message in verses 11 and 12. The first thing that Paul does in verses 11 and 12 is answer an accusation. He was accused of preaching a humanly derived gospel. With three quick strokes of his pen, the Apostle Paul refutes this. In verse 11, the first stroke, his gospel was not after men. It was not after a human idea or human standard. Then in verse 12, his gospel was not received from men. He didn't get it by hanging around other preachers. And then also in verse 12, his gospel was not taught him by men. He did not get it by going to class under some Bible scholar, some Bible school somewhere. All right. If those are the ways he did not get the gospel that he was preaching, then where in the world did it come from? Well, look at the end of verse 12. It quickly tells us Paul got it by a revelation of Jesus Christ. Paul states here and also, well, let me look down at verse 16. Verse 16 begins with these words, to reveal his son 
in me. Paul was taught this by God. If I were to turn over to 1 Corinthians chapter 15, looking at verse 3, where we have the the gospel, uh, the, the nutshell of the gospel there, we would see that he was taught the message of the gospel by the act of God giving it to him. God revealed it. We could that word "reveal" means he manifested. God brought it to light. How did Paul get it? He got it by a revelation of God. God brought it to light to him. God did it. If I were to turn over to Ephesians chapter three and verse three, the apostle Paul says that he received his information about the church age and how to operate a church directly from God as well. I started the broadcast by asking the question, where did our gospel come from? These verses tell us that our gospel came directly from God. But but wait a minute, there's more. If I were to turn over to Hebrews chapter 5 and verse 9, I would find these words, and I quote, referring to Christ, and being made perfect, referring to Christ and his, and his time here on earth, and being made perfect, he became the author of eternal salvation. He became the author, the causer of salvation, but notice it's eternal salvation. Not only is the salvation you and I received eternal, it can't be taken away from us, but salvation has not only eternity towards the future, but it's eternal in the past. Salvation story did not start with the Apostle Paul. It's the gospel of grace through faith that has been preached all through the Old Testament and all through the New Testament era. Jesus, remember, is called the Lamb slain from when? From the foundation of the world. We have an eternal gospel. The gospel we preach is not new to the church age. It only has become clearer during the church age because history has made us witness to the culminating work of salvation. And that work, of course, is the cross of Jesus Christ. You may be listening today. You're unsaved. You have never received Christ as Savior. Friend, let me tell you right now, there are no more chapters in the unfolding story of how to be saved from your sin guiltiness. The cross and the empty tomb are the final chapters. There isn't any more. It's now or never. Today is the day of salvation. Christ has done all he's going to do. You have the story of the Old Testament where Christ's death at Calvary is prefigured and animals being slain. But the blood of bulls and goats cannot take our sin away. And then you have Christ coming and John the Baptist uh, boldly proclaiming, Behold the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. And then you have the, the act of Christ dying on the cross, crucified. He died for our sin, died in your place. He was buried and he rose again. He conquered death. He really can offer you eternal life. He offers you forgiveness of your sin, guiltiness. All the work and all the story of salvation is told You now need to receive Christ as your Savior, but as many as received him, to them, only to them, to them gave he the right to become the children of God, even to them that believe on his name. Friend, there are no more chapters. The story of salvation has been written. Now, what are you going to do with the story? You must believe on the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved. Amen. Thank you for joining us today for Bible Track Echoes. If you would like to receive a free sample packet of our tracks, you can contact us by calling 309-828-6888. Our mailing address is Bible Tracks, P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. Again, our phone number is 309-828-6888. And our mailing address is P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. You can also contact us through our website. Our web address is BibleTracksInc.org. Remember, the word tracks is spelled T-R-A-C-T-S. That address is BibleTracksInc.org. May the Lord richly bless you as you serve Him.